Welcome to the Church Leadership Podcast, your weekly source for encouraging and equipping local church leaders with your hosts, Mark Ganey and Andy Frazier. In each episode, Andy and Mark sit down with church leaders that you should know. We believe these honest conversations will be helpful and encouraging to you as you lead the local church. Here is this week's episode. Welcome to today's episode of the Church Leadership Podcast. We're glad that you have joined us, whether you're watching or listening. And uh, our mission here at Church Leadership Podcast is to encourage and equip you to lead in the local church. And we know that today's conversation and today's guest is going to help you do that. So before we get there, I want to remind you to make sure you subscribe to our podcast. You can do that on any number of you know, podcast listening apps, just hit the subscribe button. Or if you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. We don't want you to miss a single episode of this podcast because we we know that we're encouraged every conversation we have and we want you to be too. So without further ado, here is today's conversation. We can't wait to get to the conversation we're going to have today. We are blessed to have our friend and uh man, an an encourager to us, uh, Scotty Goldman. Scotty serves here in the state of Alabama with our uh, State Baptist Convention. He is the, uh, he's the international man of mystery, is what we really want to call him, but he uh, serves in the, the, the office of Global Missions. He's a Wonderful guy, and we found out just a while ago, we knew he'd been serving for a while, but for 32 years, he's been start serving here in the state of Alabama. So, Scotty, we are so glad you have taken time to join us here on the podcast this week. Well, thanks, guys. I'm uh, glad to be here. When um, when I was uh, dealing with a, a call to ministry, I was serving as a summer missionary in Taiwan, and so I, I immediately thought at that point that God was calling me to international missions, to foreign missions. Hmm. So I went to seminary and I continued that prayer to, to foreign missions and he sent me to Alabama. So, <laughs> you know, there we are. Been here 32 years on the, on the foreign mission field. Wow. Wow. That's, that's, that's exactly, that's well put. Because depending <laughs> on what part of the country people are from, uh, this could definitely be a foreign place yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we're so glad to have you, man. And we're, well, we're glad you're here and we're looking forward to a conversation. I want to start by asking, um, we actually had planned to ask about Alaska. We're going to ask about Alaska, but you mentioned kind of your uh, calling to, to missions. I want to actually dig into that for a second. So tell us a little bit, Scotty, about your story and how God got you to where you are right now. It is so uh, such a, a wonderful story for me. Uh, I mean, everybody else may sleep through this part, but I, uh, when I was in college, I was very active in, uh, in Mississippi, it's called BSU. In Alabama, we call it BCM, Baptist Campus Ministries. Uh, and as a part of that, I served as a summer missionary the summer after I graduated from college. I spent 10 weeks in Taiwan and just fell in love with um, with that East Asian culture. And um, it was at that point that the Lord started dealing with me and um, and touching my heart about a call to ministry. And as I, I shared jokingly, um, because I was on an internet in an international setting, I really thought that's that might be where God was leading me. Um, but I came back to uh, to Mississippi, to my hometown, and taught for two years. I taught kindergarten. Can you believe that? <laughs> uh, I taught That's kindergarten funny. in the same room where I attended first grade. Wow. So that was that was pretty cool. Uh, did that, and um, in the meantime, uh, the community college that I had attended was about thirty miles down the road, and campus minister there was approaching retirement. So she invited me to come and work with her on a a part-time basis, just a couple of nights a week. And uh, it was through that experience that I realized that that's that's really uh, where where God was calling me into into working with college students. So I left there and went to seminary. And um, after four years at Southwestern, I wound up back in, uh, or wound up in Alabama at, uh, at Livingston, uh, Livingston University, then at UAB. But when I came to the state office uh, after eight years on campus, I wound up um, as the leader of the student missions ministry. 
did that for about 10 years and uh, had the opportunity then to come to the Office of Global Missions and do with churches what I was doing with college kids. So it has, uh, it has been a, uh, a really, really great thing for me. It's been a great opportunity. And uh, sometimes when I am, uh, am visiting some of these missionaries and some of these odd places and, you know, I sit there and, and think, how did this little redneck boy from, uh, from East Central Mississippi wind up in the back of a, a tuk tuk in India, you know, riding down the, the streets of Delhi in India. So it's, uh, it, it's just been a, a wonderful, wonderful thing for me. That's awesome. I think the moral of that journey is teaching kindergarten gardeners prepares you to work with churches. That's, that's a, <laughs> well, that's a and even more specific to work with pastors. Yes, <laughs> yes. Exactly you, right. you have to be you as know, patient with pastors as you are with kindergartners. That's, that's, that's right. true. Yeah. That's well, good. yeah, at least it's, you know, the, the big difference there is the potty training. Most of the yeah. pastors <laughs> that I work with are already Most of the pastors. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. Well, Scotty, you, you have, have been all over the place like you've talked about. Uh, you know, you, you, you've left Alabama multiple times to go to other places and you've seen a lot of things. And, and I'm encouraged because how God uses our Office of Global Missions and you and those who work in that office is to connect people to opportunities to serve, but also to prepare them. And Mark mentioned earlier, he kind of hinted, there's a opportunity our our state has taken advantage of god has blessed us with a partnership with alaska can you tell us a little bit about that we, we want to hear about that several years ago uh we shifted the way we do mission partnerships um for years and years state conventions partnered with a with a country and um and we would say all right here are all these projects all over this country come on alabama baptist and help us you know, with these projects. And it occurred to us, oh, probably 10 or 12 years ago, that we were doing that backwards. Everything else that we do at the State Board of Missions, we go to the church and say, let us resource you to do your ministry. But with the partnerships, we were saying, hey, guys, y'all come in and help us do, do this partnership. So, um, about 10 or 12 years ago, we shifted to more of a, a hybrid between the two to say, let, uh, let us help you develop your own partnerships. So that's what we've been focusing on the last 10 years is, um, is helping Alabama Baptist churches to partner with Alabama missionaries. We have about 400 Alabamians who are serving around the world. And um, we have been able to partner a lot of those with local churches for prayer support and um, mission support, mission teams, because they're already, you're already paying their salary through the cooperative program. So there's no real financial commitment except just what you do with the, the projects that you work with. But one of those guys, one of those missionaries was uh, Jay McKee. Uh, Jay is my counterpart with the Alaska Convention. So we had this kind of loose uh, partnership with Jay. And um, then the, the more we worked with Jay, the more we saw the vast need in, in Alaska. So we have, uh, have kind of formed this hybrid partnership with Alaska where we're still working with Jay and his connection to Alabama, but we broadened it to include um, all 120 something churches in uh, in Alaska, uh, right now we're uh, partnering, working to partner local associations with. Um, I, I take three associations in Alabama and partner them with one association in in Alaska. So that's kind of how we're we're working that. Mm. But the the first official thing we did um, in in way of partnership uh, was uh, it's interesting that. Jay called me one day. I was walking down the hall here at the State Board of Missions and my cell phone rang. It's not unusual to get a phone call from Jay just to say, hi, how's things going? You know, just to, to laugh. We've got a, a great friendship. So one day he called and said, man, I, I'm just, 
just really concerned about one of our churches. And he began to tell me the story of this church and some of their history. And they had, uh, had just reached a stalemate and, uh, the, the, pastor like most pastors in Alaska and like most pastors in Alabama it's bivocational and um, they had had just gotten to a point where they were were stuck and he said we've got to find some some way to help them you know get get off that bubble so you know being the encourager that I am I said okay Jay just dream big so, you know, what what would you do if you could do anything to help this church what would you do he said, well, I think I would have somebody come and live there for six months. Somebody who's gifted in evangelism and church growth and church revitalization and Sunday school growth and community ministry. And it'd be great if they had some construction background. I'm like, well, you know, I got eight or 10 of those out here on the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See who's ready to go, you know. So as I'm laughing with him about that, around the corner walked Jamie Baldwin, who you guys know is a state missionary, been here forever. Well, Jamie's worked in Sunday school growth and church revitalization and evangelism and community ministries and all those things. And the man built his own house. Yeah. So, I mean, all the boxes were yep. checked. And um, I said, when do you need them? <laughs> said, well, just as soon as they can get here because Jamie had just announced his retirement in January so long story uh, not quite so long Jamie uh, agreed to go to uh, Craig Alaska for six months and uh, just had a, a wonderful wonderful experience there uh, the pastor and his family were so welcoming and the whole church just welcomed him with open arms and um, they were able to complete a lot of construction projects and get the church where they could use the 90% of the facility. Um, first Sunday we were there, they had five people in Sunday school. A couple of weeks ago, they had 43. Mm, amen. So, you know, That's it's, awesome. it really has been just a, a wonderful thing. So um, let me, let me be very quick to say though, you guys know that the reason Jamie was, was invited to go on this this particular project was because he checked all the boxes. It really did not have anything to do with the fact that he was a former state missionary, except that, you know, that, that gave him that background, but he checked all the boxes. So um, as, as pastors, you guys know people in your church who could check the boxes. That's right. So I need you guys to help me know, you know, who are these folks that, that can go and, and do these things? That's awesome. So that's, yeah, there's no limit on opportunities as well. I mean, oh no, no, that no. that's that could be done dozens of times across Alaska. They would love to have thirty or forty Alabamians come next summer and work alongside them. Yeah, and and you know your office is called Global Missions for a reason because you're not limited to any specific geography either. And so it's all those relationships that you've God's given you over the years. So let's shift gears a little bit uh, because. You know, not only do you match churches and pastors and opportunities, um, you you actually your office and, and ministry provide training and resources uh, for yes. those who are on mission. So, talk a little bit about some of the resources you provide. Um, one of the the key things that we do, um, and it used to be just for uh, for international travel, but we're finding more and more folks are saying, "Hey, can you help us?" with um with these experiences we're having in in large cities uh we have a uh, a contract with a company that does what we call safe travel training um and in january we, in the past uh when we first started it was like an eight hour training and it was a it was a commitment um then we went to uh to more of a uh, two to three hour webinar uh, but in January, it's going to be video driven. Uh, we'll have about an hour or maybe hour and a half video series that's divided up into segments so that folks don't have to watch it all at one time. They can, um, can watch, you know, a couple of segments this week and a couple of segments the next. 
then we follow that with a 30 minute live webinar that is location specific. So the, the guy that we have our um, contract with does, um, does research and gathers intel on, um, on specific locations where the team's going to be working and says to the team, okay, here's, here's a threat, here's a threat, and here's a threat in the location where you're going. You need to be cautious about pickpocketing. You know, don't go here in this area of town. There have been nine muggings in the last year of Americans uh, after dark. So if you're going to this part of town, don't go after dark. Uh, and and he's, he's that specific. Uh, but it helps you to be prepared when you go uh, and be aware of things so that you can avoid getting in trouble and avoid uh, getting into to difficult circumstances. But one of the benefits of that is that if you do wind up having, um, you know, some kind of, of an issue, whether it's a criminal issue or some kind of, of legal issue or, or governmental issue, we have a uh, care team. Um, it's a, a crisis action team here at the, uh, the State Board of Missions that we can, uh, can pull together and help to, uh, to navigate those kind of issues and um, it's like having a, um, you know, just somebody who's got your back that you don't have to worry about those things while you're uh, on the field. Yeah. And that, that crisis action team, it's pretty fascinating to me. I, I didn't know anything about it until I was around some of those folks who were trained and they go through some pretty grueling uh, scenarios. So they, they are ready for sure. Yeah, Scott, we we are about? ready. I was going to say, you're, you're ready to help people, but a lot of people, are probably hesitant to be involved in some kind of trip abroad, international mission involvement, even if it's on a short-term basis, mainly because they just don't even know where to start. A lot of people think maybe it's cost inhibitive or maybe there's too many hoops to jump through. And you guys can walk through that whole process from the very beginning of how to recognize yeah. opportunities and, and match a church up or a group up with those opportunities to, I mean, walking them through how to get a a passport or a visa mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, travel documents they need and helping them with, with yeah. all the details to kind of arrange and facilitate those mission opportunities. And we're thankful for that. I mean, that's, that's a cooperative program at work first off, and that's God calling people like you specifically to serve, to help partner and, and, and do those things. So what would you say to somebody who may be looking for opportunities right now, whether it's, you know, here, uh, domestic in the U.S. Or, or, or Alaska or abroad, what would you encourage them to do? All right, we've got a group of people. We want to do something. We don't exactly know uh, what to do or how to get started. Um, we we can do all of those things. Uh, you know, a lot of folks say we've got a specific location in mind. You know, we we've got um, uh, a real heart for Ecuador or uh, a, a real interest in in Spain, or uh, you know, we want to go to a really, really hard place. Uh, so we, we began with, you know, where's the Lord leading you? And uh, a lot of folks you know, have that, many do not. And they say, where, you know, where can you partner us with a missionary that maybe doesn't have any partners or um, a missionary who's got a great need? So we have those kind of conversations and sometimes those are, you know, that quick. And then other times they, uh, they stretch into a, you know, a little longer conversation. We can help them determine, you know, a, a location. We need to know what kind of ministry they're interested in doing. You know, if you've got uh, people that, that don't know which end of a hammer to hold, you won't, don't want to send them on a construction project. <laughs> so, you know, we need to know what are your gifts and abilities in your church? What, what do your people know how to do? What are your passions? And, uh, and we help them look for, for a, a good place to, uh, to do their ministry. And we encourage folks, don't do a one and done. Mm -hmm. We've learned through the years that, that true difference is made over a period of time, especially in other cultures. So let's find a place that you can invest yourselves for three to five years. And, um, and then uh, focus all of your, your missions energy on those places. Maybe if it's a, you know, they have an interest internationally and one in, in the U S uh, maybe even in Alabama. Um, 
so we uh, we walked through all of that process. But you're right, the logistics, we can do logistics in our sleep. We've got a travel agent that understands mission opportunities, that the cheapest ticket is not always the best ticket. But she works with us to get those things done. We have a relationship with a, um, a mission trip insurance company that gets supplemental insurance for a couple of dollars a day. Uh, we've got the, the safe travel training that helps you to learn how to avoid difficult situations or what to do if you get caught in one. Um, we've got a checklist for team leaders and background checks and child protection videos and all of these things that we can, uh, we can help provide to churches. I mean, that's, that's, I will say this. So, you know, I've been a pastor for 20 something years and um, for a long time, you know, it, it, my fault, but for a long time, I didn't know. I didn't know all that was available. And uh, I think a lot of pastors and leaders, maybe even watching or listening to this podcast, aren't aware of that either, especially if you're in Alabama. You, you, you may have been doing all this on your own for years, and um, maybe you haven't taken a trip in a while, especially with COVID, but because it's just overwhelming. But we, there's a team of people in our state, uh, if you live in Alabama, that, that are willing and ready to help. And, and I, would, I don't, I don't want to speak for you, Scotty, but I would even be willing to, to venture uh, that this is true. You, you know, people outside of our state, if they're watching and listening, and they have questions about missions or how to go about things, I'm sure that you'd be more than willing to help them as well. So, because um, Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And then, so. especially in the Deep South, there are people in, in all of the state conventions who do what I do. Yeah. But, hey, if they're friends of yours, they're friends of mine. I'll be glad. It's all about just getting folks on the, on the field and uh, getting folks mobilized to do what God called us to do. Amen. Look, the Great Commission um, is called the Great Commission for a reason. And, uh, you know, our passion is to make disciples of all nations, and I know yours is too. And so um, I, I think... This conversation has encouraged me, and I know it has encouraged and equipped those watching and listening to, to lead in the area of missions in their local church and beyond. So, uh, Scotty, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thanks, guys. I've enjoyed chatting with you. Uh, glad to anytime. And I think there's probably a part two coming at some point. Yes, yes. Uh, one thing I always encourage church members to think about, I think there's two things every church member needs to do. I think they need to go on some type of short-term mission trip. Uh international if possible and that makes you appreciate what we have and how god has blessed us but also lets us see open our eyes to see some things in a, in a different way and also think people need to serve on a, a minister search team as well so those two <laughs> things will humble you and change your perspective so uh, that's let, right let me encourage you I, if you've not been on some type of mission trip and your church wants to be involved to reach out to scotty and the yeah. office of global missions here and our state board of missions we'll put his contact information and in, in the uh, show notes yep. and and uh Scotty, we're so thankful for you, all that you do. And man, putting up with Larry Heights, that's a big enough uh, burden as it is. But we're, we're I know I, that that really has turned into a full time job. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> people, people who have listened to the podcast, they, they know. Yeah, they know. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Scott. It's been it's been fantastic to, to hang with you this morning. Well, thanks, guys. Look forward to seeing you saying, hey, next time I'm up that way, I'm expecting a cup of coffee. Hey, absolutely. Got it. We got you covered. Thank you. Good. And uh, for the rest of you, we'll see you next time.